Welcome. This short video will explain the basic concepts you need to know to use Wordseer to analyze text. The collection we'll be analyzing in this demo is a set of all the New York Times editorials about China and Japan published over the last 30 years. There are about 5,000 of these. So this is what you see when you first open up Wordseer. It may seem like a lot of information, but it breaks down into simple components, which we'll go through now. Right now, you're seeing a single view, which is this window-like panel. But what data are you seeing view of? Well, by default, Wordseer starts out by showing you a view of the entire collection. So what's in a view? The most eye-catching part is the center panel, which contains a visualization. This particular one is a word tree visualization, but there are many other options. A word tree is a way to condense and visualize all the sentences in which a word occurs. It groups together common left and right contexts into a tree-like visualization, so you can see which words tend to occur before and after the word of interest. But why is it showing a tree of the word China? If you don't type in a search term, Wordseer just picks the most frequent content word in your collection. That's not a function word like the or that, which wouldn't be interesting, and makes a word tree out of that. This visualization is interactive, so you can see when I hover, little gray numbers pop up showing how many sentences match that. So width has 62, which means that there are 62 sentences containing width China, but there's more. This word tree actually has all the sentences. If you want to see more, just click on a branch to expand, like here, with China. And we're seeing trade with China, relations with China, etc, etc. Now we're down to individual sentences about trade with China. Those are the gray ones. If you hover over them, you get to read the whole sentence, also see all the data about it, date, the subject, China or Japan, and the month. There's also this button, go to text, and that will actually open up the editorial in a new view. At this point, you'll notice that it looks a lot like the word tree view, except of course the middle part is different. So there are two panels now, one visualizing the whole collection with a word tree, and one just of that one editorial. Still, to the left of each view panel, there are the metadata overviews, and at the bottom, there are the frequent phrase and frequent word overviews. Together, these components are just different ways to give you a sense of what's in the sentences you're looking at. Let me just close the second panel now. I just have to click on the little X at the top right to do that. The metadata overview shows the different attributes associated with the sentences in this collection, as well as how many sentences match each attribute. In this collection, the editorials are tagged with either the country China or the country Japan, and the numbers show how many sentences fall into each category. You'll notice a pop-up that says click to filter, and that's because these overviews also double as filters. They give you a way to slice down into things of interest to you. Let's try that out by clicking on Japan here. So this will go into the collection and pull out only the sentences from editorials about Japan. In Wordseer, we call this sort of thing slicing. This changes the view to reflect the new slice, and you can see what that slice is here with these breadcrumbs. These show you the slice that's supplying the data for your view. In this case, it's pretty simple, just all the sentences from editorials about Japan, like we clicked on. Look, the word tree has changed. Now we're just in the Japan editorials. Japan is the most frequent word. That's not the only thing that's changed. Look at the words at the bottom. These are the most frequent nouns, verbs, and adjectives in the set of sentences, and the most frequent phrases, too. There are other ways to filter. Let's go back to the whole collection. We can do that either by clicking on the X next to this breadcrumb here to remove that filter, or by using this back button, since that's where we were before. Okay, so we're back to looking at the whole collection. Now, there are other data associated with the editorials, the month and year of publication, so where are those? Well, since those are time, which is numerical, more like a range than a discrete category, we have a slightly different way of displaying them. The numerical data types are in the second panel here. Here's all that data displayed as a little chart. So January through December, and 1980 to 2012. The graph shows you how many articles there were in each month and each year. So what about filtering? Just like we did with Japan, we might want to just the articles from the 80s. That's what these sliders are for. And look what happens when I drag them. The numbers update. They show me what range I've selected and how many sentences match. Once I'm happy with the range I've selected, I can click the filter button to filter. So here I've selected 1980 to 1989, which is the 80s, and I filtered. So once again, the display changes. And you can see by this breadcrumb, we're now looking at just the slice of sentences from editorials in 1980 to 1989. That's what it slices. It's a set of sentences. So the word tree for the 80s is slightly different, and the metadata are also slightly different. Smaller numbers, because this is only 10 years out of the 30. 
and of course the numerical metadata, only 1980 to 1989, and at the bottom, the most frequent words from the 80s, nouns, verbs, adjectives, and phrases. Now, you can combine filters, keep filtering finer and finer. Like, if I now click Japan, so you see the breadcrumbs reflect the new slice, editorials about Japan from the 80s. So far, we've interacted with the filters and the word tree, but we haven't really talked much about these frequent words and phrases. For each slice, like here, the editorials about Japan from the 80s, Words here pulls out the most frequent nouns, verbs, and adjectives in the slice and shows them to you in a list. All the word forms are grouped together, like the different senses of a verb are grouped together, and just unclick this group by stem to see them separately. Like here, year and years are separate now. It also does the same for the two, three, and four word sequences. So these are the two word sequences, but using this drop down, I can see the longer ones. For example, these are the three word sequences. And these don't include stop words like the and of and and. So if I want if I want those, I can check this box and I'll see sequences including the and of and such like. So now I'm getting the stop words, but I don't really want them. The point of all this is to try to give you a sense of the contents of the slice. The metadata filters give you a sense of how the different attributes are distributed, but these give you a sense of the actual content of the slice. If you're not super familiar with the editorials, this might help you discover the main points that are discussed. The frequent phrases are often pretty good at that. If you're familiar with it, these can often help unearth interesting things. The great thing about these is that just like the metadata filters, these can filter too. Just click to slice. So for example, clicking on International Whaling Commission here, well there are 15 sentences. What's going on here? Oh look! That's interesting. There's two separate defiances of the International Whaling Commission. Let's look at the sentences. So this is how word trees work really well. We've quickly discovered that in the 80s, there was a controversy over Japan's take on whaling. So now we've seen how word trees and filters and overviews work, but these are just a small piece of what words here can do. In the next segment, we'll see how to search and explore the collection's grammatical structure.